Hello, my beautiful water signs. This is going to be the February reading for Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. We are going to start with Cancers, and let's go ahead and get into it. If you have never been here before, welcome to the channel. My name is Priscilla Bernstein. I am a soul alignment specialist. I am here to help people get back into alignment with their soul by channeling uh, spirit, um, excuse my dog if you can hear her coughing. She's kind of a little lady. Um, but anyways, I channel spirit and I'm a conduit for the highest and best. My higher self is always talking to your higher self. And this is going to be the reading for cancer and what you need to know or what is in store for you for February. Thank you, Infinite Spirit, for making me a conduit for the best and highest of all who are going to watch this, bringing in the right information that they need to hear. All right. So, Cancers, let's see what is in store for you. If Cancer is your sun sign, make sure that you watch your rising and moon sign as well to get the most out of what February has in store for you. Okay, Spirit, so can you tell me what Cancers are working on this month? We got the tower reversed. Beautiful. Okay, and what do my Cancers have to look forward to for the month of February with this new foundation that they're building? We got the Six of Cups reversed and the Six of Wands reversed. All right, and then what are the challenges or lessons that my Cancers are learning? We got Eight of Swords reversed and Six of Crystals reversed. A lot of reversals here, very interesting. Okay, and so what is the spiritual guidance or solution? Oppression reversed. And then what is the overall energy that my Cancers are going to be navigating this month? The Emperor. This is literally the only card you guys got upright. Um, I am going to pull clarifiers now for my beautiful Cancer crabs. Looks like you're coming out of your shells and moving into some really deep empowerment, which is beautiful. So let's get these clarifier cards out. Shuffling for clarifiers for my Cancer babes. All right, can I get a clarifier for this tower, please, Spirit? Got the High Priestess reversed. Can I get a clarifier for what they have to look forward to, please? The Hanged Man reversed. <laughs> I'm like, this. Is, I don't think this has ever happened where almost every card is reversed. Can I get a clarifier for the challenges and lessons that my crab cancer babes are going through the eight of cups upright and then can i get a clarifier for this oppression card please five of swords upright and can i get a clarifier for this emperor please spirit I get a clarifier for this emperor, please, of what is in store as the overall energy for my cancer base. They're not wanting to say anything else, or they just want to throw out a bunch of them. So I'm going to take them because you guys didn't get a whole lot of cards that flew out. Um, so let's see, we got the Knight of Swords reversed. The Eight of Coins reversed. The King of Cups upright. The Queen of Coins upright. The Two of Coins reversed. And Judgment card. All right, so let's get into it. All right, so Cancers, the Tower card reversed is always something 
usually that tells me that you guys have just gone through a really big tower moment. You've had some major transition and transformation in your life and something foundational, big foundational shifts have happened. This is happening on a collective level. So just know that you're not alone in this, but you're building something foundationally new and you're already in that rebuilding phase. With the high priestess reversed here, what I'm getting is, um, you really need to trust your instincts and trust that internal nudge when it's telling you to move forward on something. There is more that is coming to light but is not being told yet or that you do not have the information on yet. So just let things unfold and unfurl as they will. Trust the divine timing of everything don't be in any rush to build this foundation and to get it, um, you know, Rome wasn't built in the day, to get it to where you can build on top of it right away. It's almost like you're having to put in in this uh, re-foundation laying, like rebar both ways to make sure it's really sound and secure before you can build upward on it. So allow the... Um, the unfolding process to happen and just know spirit is really working with you but there there's no rush okay don't push forward for anything to happen if it's not flowing if it's not um falling into place or in sync walk away from it and focus your attention on something else that you do have control over that you can put your energy towards and then something will shift over there and move back into place again right to to create more momentum so just know that this is nothing that you have to physically do but you are having to really pay attention to your internal instincts and nudges when you are being called or nudged to do something um let that divine action be stirred within you okay um, so what do you have to look forward to? We have the six of cups and the six of wands. So two sixes, six again is a number for foundation, for family, for, um, building something that is like a legacy. And then you have the hangman re reversed as your clarifier here. So usually with the six of cups and the six of wands is you're needing to get clear. There's um, a lack of clarity right now on um, what it is that you're wanting to build or where you're wanting to go and the legacy that you're wanting to create. There needs to be more clarity around those things. Um, the six of cups, it's like you're building castles, not in the sand, but like you're imagining the castle and the life that you're wanting. You're creating that container, right? But it's reversed. So I'm getting that that you're there's more clarity that needs to come around that. What you thought you wanted maybe was like more of an ego ask or like societal norm. And so you, you need to start re really digging deep into your heart and your soul to see what your higher self is really asking for and get clear on that. And once you're clear on that, things will usually start to move. But with this hangman reverse, it's like a perspective shift needs to happen and maybe you're right in the middle of it. But the six of wands too, usually this card is all about action or momentum or movement, right? And there's like a division and like this portal opening happening. And so again, that clarity is needing to come through about what you're creating in this container, what you're creating out here as your legacy, as the like, um, as the foundation is being laid, you need to understand and get the blueprint down on what it is that you're actually wanting. Um, so movement can shift in to place, but a perspective shift is really, really needed. So what I'm getting right now is to zoom out like your um, spirit saying you're too focused on maybe things that aren't working or you're too focused on like like small details that aren't where your focus needs to be. It's like you need to zoom out and see everything from a higher perspective. You need to see the timeline and, and your whole life as a legacy, as opposed to like what you're doing right now in this moment and how to make money or make ends meet or, you know, like 
what it is that you're doing for work or with your family. Like if something's kind of weighing on you, you're like, you're too focused on the one thing and you need to zoom out and start looking at the legacy at the long term, um, and be in more of the like vision of the seeing the whole timeline play out, if that makes sense. Um, one way that you can do this and, and a resource that I have is the latest new moon meditation on my Patreon will actually help you, um, toggle to the future version of yourself. And there's a lot of support that we call in, in that meditation to really help you get to that next step. Um, so that is a resource and a meditation that you can do, a guided meditation that you can do that will really help you understand where you're going so you can kind of pull yourself out of this like here and now um so i will link that below so you guys have that okay and so um what challenges or lessons are you learning this month we got the six of crystals reversed and the eight of swords reversed you're coming out of you're coming out of this energy of like maybe not trusting where you're being led. You're coming out of an energy of feeling like you're in this like self contained, you know, limitation, this like, um, this confinement that has been self created. You're coming out of that and you're coming out of this like reality that, that you're having to do it all yourself because with the clarifier here, the eight of cups, it's like, there's been some like heartache around that, you know, of like doing it all by yourself and, and being judgmental of other people and how they do things or, or judging even yourself for thinking that maybe you need support and you're, you're, what the challenge is or that you're needing to learn is how to pull yourself out of the, the understanding that there are no real limitations beyond what is in our mind, right? We just have to, one, be humble enough to say, I can't do this on my own and be gracious enough to seek out the support that we need. And in doing so, when we do this, not only does it help us see that it's like, oh, I really didn't have to do it on my own. And I don't have to be weary of, um, tapping my resources right because that's what the we're moving into in new earth energy is more of a collaborative energy like we're coming together in community um we're learning how to be more sustainable we're learning how to work together like the whole thing around unity like the energy of unity is the frequency of what we're stepping into in this new earth frequency so Everywhere where you have felt let down by somebody else in the past or where you've made it wrong to ask for support or um, where you have really, you know, I mean, I'm talking to my cancers here. It's like you have this hard outer shell and this soft inner. It's like it's time to take the shell off and understand that you're not going to get eaten alive or attacked because of your softness, of your vulnerability, of your emotionality, right? So it's time to like take that off and let yourself be seen and let people know that you're vulnerable. Let people know that you may need more support or that you may need help. Ask for exactly what you're needing so you can get that in return. And if you're not getting it from the person that you're asking it from, then ask somebody else that is more supportive or that can help support you in that way, right? Um, just because it's, it's almost like you're needing to broaden your, what I'm getting is like, you need to broaden your collective, your tribe in order to uh, start calling in your soul tribe in order to get the support that you're needing. So what is the spiritual guidance or solution? Again, taking off the blindfold, taking off the shell, letting yourself come out of that oppressive state, coming out of oppression and taking the mask off. This five of swords is all about mask wearing and like tiptoeing around and trying to be something that you're not or trying to be stronger than you are because, you know, in the grand scheme of things, um, it's all false. And I'm not saying that you're not being true to yourself, but what I am saying is there are things that you've put into place to help protect you that are not needed anymore. So with 
that being said, the overall energy that you're navigating this month is learning how to be your most empowered self while being that vulnerable, soft, emotional um, crab without a shell as you make your way to find your new foundation or your new shell. Like it's, it's learning how to be masterful in the energy that you're carrying and knowing that you, it, you're not meant to do it all alone, right? And so with that, the clarifiers, you, got a, you guys got a lot here. We got the Knight of Swords. It's like you're transitioning and you're beginning to cultivate this, what you're navigating is cultivating this new um, frequency and this new way of seeing things, these new ideas, these new way of thinking about the world, that it is safe, right? Um, then you have this eight of coins, which is like the rebuilding phase. You're not quite there because remember you need some, some clarity, but you need to follow your heart. You need to understand what your heart is asking for, what your soul is asking for deep down inside, connect to that higher self, to that, that soul self, you know, that, that intelligence that's within you that's with moving throughout your cells, that's watching from above, you know, like this may sound really woo woo, but I mean, man, if you've never worked with me, this might be something that could be really great for you um, because I do become the conduit and what I get channeling and what I'm getting for you guys now is that there's just, there's so much available to you. You just have to learn how to like tune in to your heart to that vulnerable place that you've been maybe a little afraid of like really tapping into and seeing what's underneath all that vulnerability all the emotionality right so there's more here okay then we have the queen of coins it's understanding that you are abundant that you have every resource that you need around you there's no there's nothing that you're seeking that is outside of you like literally it's all in your life right now you just need to begin asking for it to show itself of who you need to ask what it is that you're needing to move towards who those people are that you're needing to you know navigate and um, be in in community with right and the universe will bring them to you and then we have the judgment card and the two of coins so you're learning how to balance all of this in the physical reality right you're learning how to balance this new version of yourself, these new ideas. That's going to be something that you're navigating this month, as well as this judgment card of bringing things into the light of truth, right? The judgment card is all about truth. It's all about um, finding that balance in, in like a just world, right? And so when we think about the judgment card or any sort of thing in the justice system, it's like the balancing of the scales, right? Like, yes, our justice system might be a little screwed up right now, but when you think about the grand idea of what the justice system is meant to be is, is checks and balances, right? And so you're going to be learning how to navigate all of these new, how to like take off the, the mask, how to come out of your shell, how to come out of the self-confined limitation that you've put yourself in. Because when you think about a crab when it's growing, um, maybe more like a, what are those other types of crabs? Those little ones that have to, when they grow, they have to leave the smaller shell that they're in to find a bigger one, right? And they have this moment of um, vulnerability when they're like scurrying around trying to find that new shell. But it, like right now you're in this, shell is too tight for you so the new foundation is not ready that your new shell isn't ready but you need to be able to go out on your own and be that vulnerable crab for a little bit and know that the world isn't out to get you okay so i'm gonna go ahead and pull um an oracle card for you all now sorry bubba i scared my dog when i moved so what messages do we have for our cancer babes to help them navigate this energy this month in February, please, spirit? Okay. We got the Luna Moth. And I'm going to go ahead and read this one to you. Moths are drawn to... Um, 
to flame. So let's see, she might be drawn to the moon. All right, the Luna Moth lives for only a short time. Within that period, they mate, eat, and then die, only to have their offspring carry on their legacy. Didn't I just say that you guys need to zoom out and focus on the legacy, the like long-term, right? Um, their unique coloring attracts much interest. Their wings appear to glow, and they have circles that look like moons on them. Some cultures associate the Luna Moth with a symbol of transformation and change. Other cultures suggest the Luna Moth represents a person's soul as it leaves a dead body. No matter where you place the Luna Moth's spiritual virtue, it is a stunning spectrum or specimen of uh, Lepidoptera. Meaning, it's time to transform bad habits into good ones, take a healthy break from your obsessions to gain revelations. Exactly what I was saying. So you're moving out of that smaller container of maybe having some bad habits, of being too focused on the things that really don't matter all that much right now, and you need to zoom out and look at the long term. You need to have this transformational state uh, and revelation, right? moving the obsession, the small, like under the microscope into the grand scheme of things. That's the revelation, the fullness of the story, right? And then when you think about moths or butterflies, they do really uh, denote, and that's the energy they carry is transformation, right? Because they come from this like caterpillar and then they go into their, their, um, uh, I'm blanking on the, the term, the phase where they break down from a caterpillar and turn into a moth or a butterfly, right? They, they symbolize uh, transformation and that's what you guys are going through. You're going through this huge transformation. So I'm gonna pull one more card for you all. This is going to be a moon card based on what it is, the energy that you're needing to hold or carry to help you navigate through this transformation this month. Yep, release and creation, 27 and 39. So nine and three would break down to a 12, which would break down to a three, and then two and seven would break down to a nine. So both, um, both are in the realm of three. The nine is the three uh, tripled, right? And so it's time to release the old, to let go of that version of yourself that you've been, to let go of that old shell and that old container, to let go of the mask and um, to look at new perspectives, to allow yourself to step into creation, to bringing in new ideas, to listening to that instinct. You know, the the foundation is being built. You just need to focus on yourself right now and the long-term legacy. All right, I hope this was super helpful for you, my beautiful Cancers. If it was, please um, like this, comment, share. I'd love to hear more about your story, if that's something you would like to share. Um, and if you want to check out and utilize that resource, my Patreon should be linked down below. And um, please share this with another cancer or friend if this was resonant for you. All right, and now we're gonna move on to my beautiful Scorpios. Let's see, it's 2325. I'm gonna write that down. All right, so moving on to my beautiful Scorpios. This is going to be your reading for the month of February, what you're navigating, what's in store for you. These are general readings, but sometimes if Spirit has somebody that they know is gonna be watching, they will give me something very specific. So, you know, take what resonates, leave what doesn't. Um, all right, and let's get into my beautiful Scorpio babes. All right, so you're telling me to shuffle one more time. All right, so what do my beautiful Scorpios need to know for the month of February? What are my Scorpios working on for the month of February? We got the world reversed and the 
Four of Swords reversed. I have all my decks listed below as well. So if you're liking these photos, you can link to them. Um, you can, or just copy and paste them and look them up yourself. So what do you have to look forward to? What do my Scorpios have to look forward to for February? The Eight of Coins reversed. All right, what are the challenges or lessons that my Scorpios are learning? We got the King of Wands and the Five of Swords, both reversed. What is it about my water signs? Everybody's reversed. All the cards are reversed. What is the spiritual guidance or solution for the Scorpios through the month of February, through whatever it is that they're navigating? What is the spiritual guidance? Here we go. Eight of swords upright first upright card what is the overall energy that my scorpios are navigating please spirit what is the overall energy that my scorpios are navigating i'm going to take these cards that turned over we got the six of wands and then the star card both upright beautiful all right, so let's pull some clarifiers for you, my lovelies. All right. Oh, they're telling me they don't want me to use this deck. Okay, how about this one? Yep, okay, cool. Okay, Scorpios. You're so secretive, but spirits interjecting here. Okay, so what are the energies? These are the clarifiers. What are the energies or what are my Scorpios working on this month? Can I get a clarifier, please? A few less. What are my Scorpios working on this month, spirit? Four of Swords reversed. Okay, and what do my Scorpios have to look forward to, please, Spirit? Can I get a clarifier for this Eight of Coins reversed, please? Eight of Swords. Okay, can I get a clarifier? Ooh. Ace of Wands reversed. Can I get a clarifier for their spiritual guidance or solution, please? Page of Wands reversed. And then what is the overall energy clarifier, please? The Emperor and the Justice both upright. Okay, so here we go. Let's dig into your reading, Scorpio. So we got the world reversed and then the Four of Swords reversed. And then you guys got the Four of Swords reversed a second time as the clarifier. So you're coming out... It's like you've been in a cocoon phase. You've been in this phase of like the Four of Swords is all about contemplation, meditation, coming within, cocooning, being by yourself, right? And you're being called out into the world to step out in a different way. Um, and let me see if I can get one more clarifier here. Can I get one more clarifier for this spirit? Thank you. The Nine of Wands. Okay, so this is having to do with work and the like hard work that you're putting in. It doesn't have to be done alone. Like you can um, delegate things out. You can create uh, more of a community that and a support system to help you. But what you're needing to do is come out in the world and really tap your resources in the world of 
of who can help and how they can help and start to pull them into your field and um, start asking, get your asking gear um, is what I'm getting for that. Okay, let's see. Um, what do you have to look forward to? We have the eight of coins and this is all about craftsmanship, but it's not like that's what I'm getting. It's not about you and your craft that you're not honing your craft. You're learning how to like trust uh, bringing in others to delegate your craft and like knowing that your name is, is stamped on it or you're branded, you know, because you're, you're part of the, the, you know, the project or the, the thing that's going on, but the eight of swords is like that, like you've been holding yourself in this like confinement or uh, like self-imposed um, kind of like barricade because you have been feeling like you have to do it all yourself or it has to be done a certain way and you have to do it. But it's not that it's, it's more around the lines of like, trusting I mean as Scorpios you guys know you don't trust very easily you give little tidbits of information just what's necessary or what's needed right and so this is more of like you opening it up and trusting in a different way to where you don't have to sting somebody right if they wrong you you can just ask for the thing that you need. If they say no, you can just go on your merry way and ask the next person, right? Um, but it's there, there's limitless possibilities here. And it's like you're needing to shift your focus off what, quote unquote, you're doing on your own and figure out how you can wrangle in and call in soul tribe that can help you um, accomplish the things that you're looking at accomplishing okay and so what are the challenges or lessons that you're learning we got the five of swords reversed and then the king of wands reversed with the ace of wands reversed so what i'm getting here the challenge is is how you initiate projects how you initiate action in your life um, it needs, like, you yourself are solid as a human being, as a worker, as a, a person that takes charge and that focuses. I mean, Scorpios, even though you're a water sign, you're very fiery, you know, like you get shit done. But this five of, of swords and the king of, of wands, it's almost like, like you have this tendency to just say like well I can do it better so I'm just going to do it myself right but this new way of doing things needs to happen so that's the the challenge or the lesson that you're going to be learning this month is like how to enact this how to delegate responsibility in a way that you can eject yourself that it's not about you it's about the community or the um the team that you're building right it's like how do you make this more sustainable for you to move forward in what it is that you're doing in life I mean this could literally be like the relationship that you have with your kids and not doing everything yourself and allowing them to like take some of the responsibility and doing chores and giving them you know delegating responsibility to them so it's not all on you this could be something in your job if you know you work with with team members or you you have to delegate things but you've taken on so much that you end up doing too much on your own and like starting to delegate more responsibility to others so you can lessen your responsibility um this can also be in your, your relationship with your partner you know like there there's so much that this could be around so just acknowledge what's happening in your life where you've taken on too much and you are carrying all the babies on your back right because that's what scorpion mamas do and i'm not saying this is masculine or feminine here but it's like you're carrying too much and you're needing to learn how to delegate that out and and how to um liberate yourself more okay and so what is a spiritual guidance or solution you guys got the eight of swords again remember the eight of swords here is that self-confined limitation it's like you're building you're limiting yourself because you're 
and it's all self-created, you know, like, cause you think you have to do it on your own. But with this um, page of wands, you know, this is the, no, this isn't the knight of wands. Um, the page of wands is like this new beginning in, in a way of doing things, right? And so um, you need to start to see things as limitless possibilities are available to you that maybe the way that you've always done it isn't the right way. So start asking spirit and your higher self, you know, how do I do this in a more sustainable way? bring me the people that I need to work with, bring me the resources that I need to tap into. Like, how do I do this so I'm not carrying it all by myself, right? Um, Cause really we do live in a limitless universe where there's limitless potentials and possibilities. So just start asking for them to show up and they will start to show up. And so the overall energy that you're gonna be navigating this month is learning how to be the star without burdening yourself in being the star. And then you have the six of wands, which is all about moving things along. You know, this is all about progression, progress, um, momentum and movement and building that foundation. The number six is all about foundation. It's all about legacy and family. So it's like the work family you have or your physical family unit or, you know, the, the, family of soul tribe that you have around you like how do you move that forward in a way where you're the star of the show but you don't have to carry it all yourself um and you're you're liberated in that and so yeah the um clarifiers were the emperor and judgment which or justice you know the justice system is all about balance it's all about um, balancing the scales. This is interesting because this is what cancer got too, but it's like you're learning how to be the master of your own domain and be able to delegate so you're not the one, you know, an emperor just sits on its throne and delegates. They don't, they don't go out and do the work. They hire people to do that. They hire advisors to help them, you know? And so it's you figuring out how to find that balance, that work-life balance, that you know, family dynamic balance of, you know, getting shit done, but also delegating out, you know, and the balance between your relationships. So um, I hope that was helpful. I'm going to go ahead and pull uh, an Oracle card for you all now to get any sort of message that's needing to come through. So can you give me an Oracle card for my Scorpio babes? One of them flew out. I'm trying to see if there's another one that wants to come. Okay, so we got three. We got Expel, Rainbow Road, and Ebb and Flow. Okay, so yep, it's time to expel any fears around people not doing it right. Um, you needing to be in control, expelling the the pressure, right? Like that you've put on yourself. Like I'm seeing like the pressure cooker. It's like turning it off and releasing the steam. So the pressure comes off you and now is on, you know, your team or your family or, you know, you're, you're delegating it out to your relationships to have more balance in your life, okay? Um, the rainbow road, it's like, you don't have to be this lone wolf anymore. Like you can call in your tribe. You can cultivate that. You're not, um, you're not succumbed to be out in the desert on your own. You know, like this is, this is a building of, of a legacy. This is something big that's happening. So allow that to happen and be in the ebb and flow. Look at these two people working together here, like dancing and looking at one another it's like you know trust in universal timing trust in the flow of how things are coming in and going out um ask your guidance your you know ancestors your um angels your guides ask anybody that is out there ascended masters you know the higher ups ask them 
anybody on the ethereal realm to help you ask for that support call it in call in your soul family call in the people that that are are there for you call in your resources i'm gonna pull one more card for you all and this is gonna be your moon card all right so what do my scorpion scorpio babes what energy do they need to be holding to help them through all of this this month? Balance, abundance, beginnings, and power. Yeah. Uh, beginnings was came out reversed, but um, you're needing to find balance in your abundance, in the things that you are creating and calling in balance and new beginnings that are starting and balance in your power how you utilize that power how you cultivate it how you um direct it right there is balance in all areas of our life and how we utilize this power and how we initiate things into being okay so i hope this was helpful my beautiful scorpios if it was please share this with another scorpio um if you would like to share any part of your story of how this resonated with you please do so in the comments i love to hear about what is happening in your life and I'm sorry that I was gone for a couple months. I was traveling and um, it was difficult to always be, you know, to be on the road and do work and stay grounded and do all of this while moving and not staying put in one place. So I hope that was um, helpful and make sure to watch your rising and moon sign as well to get the fullness of what February has in store for you. Okay, so moving on, we have 41.24 for my beautiful Pisces. All right, so let's get into my Pisces reading now. Welcome to the channel, Pisces. Thank you for your patience if you watched all of those. Um, I do have the timestamps below, so hopefully you just went to your sign. Um... All right, so Spirit, can you tell me what is in store for my Pisces babes this month for the month of February? All right, here we go. What are my Pisces working on this month, Spirit? Woo! We got the Wheel of Fortune, the Magician, and the Ace of Wands reversed. All right, what do my Pisces have to look forward to, please, Spirit? Thank you. We got the Knight of Pentacles reversed, the Knight of Swords reversed, and then the Nine of Wands upright. Hmm, that might be more of a challenge, but let's see. What are the challenges or lessons? Death reversed and King of Cups reversed. Okay, what is the spiritual guidance or solution? That one went flying. The page of wands. And what is the overall energy that my Pisces babes are navigating? Four of wands on its side. And the strength reversed. Okay, so I'm going to pull some clarifiers for you beauties, my little fishy babes. All right. Okay, Spirit, can you give me a clarifier for what my Pisces are working on this month? We got the Hangman reversed and the King of Swords upright. Can you give me a clarifier on what my Pisces babes have to look forward to? We got the Queen of Pentacles upright and the Five of Hearts reversed. I'm sorry, Queen of Pentacles reversed and Five of Hearts upright. Said that backwards. Oh no, this one doesn't feel like what you have to look forward to, so I might have to switch these. What are the um, challenges or lessons that my Pisces are learning? We got the Five of Pentacles, the Two of Hearts, 
the Ace of Swords, all upright, and then the King of Wands reversed. Nope, they're saying that's it. Okay, so what is the spiritual guidance or solution? Clarifier on that. The Hierophant upright, the Prince of Swords reversed, and the Eight of Wands reversed. Okay, and then what are the clarifiers for the overall energy? The Seven of Wands and the Lovers reverses on the bottom of the deck. So I'm going to take that because it was really calling out to me. Okay, so let's get into your reading, Pisces. Okay, so what you're working on this month, it was the Wheel of Fortune, the Magician, and the Ace of Wands with the clarifier of... The Hanged Man reversed and the um, King of Swords. So there's a... It's almost like, okay, what I'm getting is you've initiated something new. You've stepped into doing something new. You've committed to it. You've put action towards it. And now the wheel is in motion and you're learning how to be the alchemist through this creation you're going the king the king of swords is the fastest king in the deck he's super quick with his mind so trust the things that are coming through through your third eye through your higher self things that are coming into your intuition okay so focus on those things that are coming in and utilize that quick wit and the um rapid thoughts that are coming in the ideas like take all of that and work with it and then you have the hangman reversed um i'm getting that you don't have to see things from a different perspective you already are seeing things from a different perspective like your perspective is broadening so um things are already in motion and now it's just you learning how to be the alchemist and making it all work, okay? So what do you have to look forward to? This is the, the interesting thing. Um, we had the Knight of Pentacles reversed, then the Knight of Swords reversed, and the Nine of Wands upright. So the Nine of Wands is usually a card of like oppression and um, hard work and um, like just like you've been putting in a lot and you know it's going to be worth it, but it's like you're not quite there yet, right? And then you have the, the Knight of Swords who has this like super straight focus and knows exactly where they're going. Like you don't exactly know where you're going and then this Knight of Pentacles, like you don't have it all figured out in the physical yet either, right? Um, so there's a lot of work happening. Um, and if there's something that is not working out that is bringing you some sort of like heartache or pain, um, know that you can't focus on what's not working. You need to focus on what is working and learn how to cultivate your own, to tap your own well, to cultivate your own strength from within um, because you have the resources within, but it's not going to come from outside of you, okay? Um, what I'm getting is, is that things may not be working how you thought they would or things aren't going to flow as you thought they would. And... What's weird is what you have to look forward to, but I guess what they're saying is what you have to look forward to is like learning how to harness this energy from within, learning how to activate this abundance from within, this the resources from within as opposed um as opposed to having this more conditional or um like codependent on something outside of you to deliver that. Does that make sense? But know the hard work is all going to be worth it, okay? That's what you have to look forward to. Your hard work is going to pay off. And so what are the challenges or lessons that you're learning? The Knight of Cups and Death. It's like you're letting go of... Mm -hmm. 
So the Knight of Cups can denote really like a Casanova type energy or somebody that like runs hot and cold that's like all in and then like ghosts or, you know, like this um, wears their heart on their sleeve and then like dips, you know, because they, they just don't deliver or they, they're like ADD about their love and they love everybody, you know, and so... Um, you need with the death card, let me see what these other cards are. Yeah, we got the five of pentacles, the two of hearts, the ace of swords, and those were all upright. And then the king of wands reversed. So what I'm getting is, um, the challenges or lessons that you're learning. This is kind of shifting, I think, into more of a, like, a relationship so if somebody's dealing with a relationship it's almost like like there's going to be a death in that relationship not physically right but like a death around what you thought was going to be um and death might not be the right word but it's the death card and so it's like it's like a closure of that type of relationship that you thought you were going to have with somebody and something new's coming in so don't focus on like the door that's closing or the bad thing that's happened i mean this could be the same thing here in this what you have to look forward to it's like something's going to end something's you know, like maybe you've been in kind of a codependent relationship or you've been expecting somebody to like show up for you a certain way or something like that. But it's just like, no, it's not happening. So you have to do it by yourself and you have to learn how to like cultivate that empowerment and the, your resources from within. But something new is coming from that, like a new sense of self, a new relationship um, new ideas, uh, a new way of thinking. And then you have this King of Wands, the movement that you, that you thought was going to happen or that you had initiated, um, isn't going to quite like land the way that you thought it would, but there's, um, there's like a deep cultivation that's needing to happen, like an excavation of the heart, right? Of like what's not working and what is and getting really radically honest with yourself about that. Um, and don't don't get hung up on, on what's not working. Like don't look at the negative of it. Like see everything as a blessing and just let it go. Let it die off and focus on yourself. Focus on cultivating that empowerment from within. Focus on what you're doing and what you're wanting to put your energy towards. And these new ideas are going to start to come to you and, and new love and new um, partnerships and new opportunities. All that stuff's going to start to come in. So what is a spiritual guidance or solution? We have the page of wands. It's like looking out at, at your horizon and knowing like you literally have the world at your feet. You just have to start taking the direction in the way that you want to go. You can't look back at what that other person was doing or that thing that didn't work out, you know, like that's what spirit's saying here with that five of pentacles. Like you got to let it go. You got to let it die off and just like move forward on your own. Um, you guys, as the um, clarifiers, you guys got the hierophant upright, the prince of swords reversed, and then the eight of wands reversed. And the eight of wands is all about signs and synchronicities and paying attention to the signs but you're not going to be getting that like you're needing to really trust the path that's been laid out for you if that makes sense um with this knight of or the prince of swords reverse too it's like you don't want to so much trust your logic or the thinking that you have but more but you do have quick wit right and you need to trust your intuition, just don't let the logical mind, because it's not going to match up with what your intuition is saying, okay? So your logical mind will try to like justify things or, you know, and that's going to like put a wobble in your field and what you're creating. If you're picking up something in your intuition, what's coming through really quickly, listen to that first instinct, right? And then don't let yourself get caught up in the whirlwind of like, thinking and overthinking because then you get caught in a cyclone but the hierophant is all about traditionality right of doing things a traditional way so just put one foot in front of the other know that that what's coming 
I guess what Spirit's saying is in order to move forward in the best way possible to ask for spiritual guidance in um, bringing what is meant for you into your, excuse me, into your life what is destined for you and what is right for you to bring that into your life, to put that on your path so you know to choose it, right? And that is what this Hierophant card is really kind of like honing in on. And so um, the overall energy that you're navigating this month, this Four of Wands is all about foundation. It's all about a unity card for the Twin Flame Union if you're in a Twin Flame journey. Um, this could even be for, you know, the foundation of what you're creating with a partner and your family and the home that you're creating, right? But this came out sideways. So that came out sideways and we had the strength card reversed. And then we got the seven of wands upright and then the lovers reversed. So there's going to be some opposition in and challenges in your interpersonal relationships this month. Um, this could be your relationship with your partner. This could be your relationship with your, um, you know, business partner or intimate partner. This could be just relationships with people that are near and dear to your heart. Right. And, and it's like, you're building a new foundation. You're in the process of like figuring this out. And like I said, in, in, I think it was cancers, um, the beginning of their reading, we really, on a collective level, we're all working on our foundation. We're all having foundational shifts right now. But there is a need for strength that's not going to come from any other source than from within. So you have to learn how to cultivate that. And you're right in the throes of it all right now. Like it's all happening in this moment. So just know that, that it's going to be a process and again, look at everything that's happening as a blessing. That's the best way I can put it is look at everything that's happening as a blessing, even if it's a blessing in disguise and you don't see it quite as a blessing yet, but just keep telling yourself, I don't know why this is happening, but I know it's a blessing and I know it's leading me to my greater good. I know that it is aligning something for me, right? And every time you say this, then just keep saying, okay, spirit, what is what is meant for me, show me, put it on my path, like put me on my destined path and allow that path to start unfolding in front of you, okay? So I'm gonna pull a um, an oracle card for you all now to give you a message for the month. Oops, I guess this one really wants to stay out but I'm gonna ask if there's any more. Okay, Spirit, do you have any other messages for my Pisces babes for the month of February? Oops. Okay, so we got shadows in light, rainbow road, and smoke screens. Okay, what I'm getting with this, Scorpio got rainbow road too. What I'm getting with this is you're needing to look at <laughs> what you've been putting a mask on, what has been a smoke screen in your life that you haven't really been trusting your intuition, that you haven't been honoring your internal guidance and what you're getting like off the top of your head. Like you need to you need to look at that and be radically honest with yourself. You need to look deep into your shadows and bring light to them and see you know, be able to look at the dark stuff that maybe you've like just hidden away, right? And, and hold yourself accountable. Hold yourself and others accountable for, you know, what these fears are, what these shadows are that you've been, you know, suppressing and, and the smoke screens that you've been allowing, right? And not listening to your instinct. And with that, the rainbow road will open up. Like you're not alone in this. Like you have guidance. You're not a lone wolf. You're not caught out in the desert by yourself. Like, like there's a myriad of possibilities and things available to you, resources, people, opportunities. You just have to open yourself up 
and deal with these, you know, issues of what you've been allowing into your life and what you've been settling for. And then working on the shadow aspects of why you would settle for those things, why you have allowed them, why you've, um, why you haven't been willing to look at certain things, right? Once, once we can dig underneath and get beneath the, the problem or the issue, it ceases to be an issue, you know? So that's why shadow work is so brilliant and so beautiful. And then you can kind of let go of the things and the people that aren't in alignment with you. You can see them for what they are, that they're not in alignment, that it's like you've kept them around because they've been serving some sort of limiting belief that you've had based on the shadows that you've been carrying. Okay, so now the last card is going to be a moon card. What is the energy that my Pisces babes need to hold to help them navigate all of this this month? All right, fear, balance, abundance, beginnings, power, and growth. So what's interesting is fear and growth came in upright and then balance, abundance, beginnings, and power all came out reversed. So I'm guessing that through overcoming your fears, through um, initiating the whole radical honesty through the smoke screens and stuff like that and looking at your shadow and being able to navigate that, you're going to have intense amounts of growth this month which is a really good thing. Growth is amazing. It's not always comfortable, but it's amazing when we're growing and ascending. And then with that, you're gonna gain power. You're gonna gain new beginnings. You're gonna gain abundance and you're gonna gain balance. Like it's all gonna come to fruition once you get over your fear and you allow that growth to happen. Okay, my loves. I hope this was super helpful for you. If it was, please like and comment, share your um, story or how it resonated with you. Share this with another fellow Pisces or water sign if it is something that you think would resonate with them. And if you would like other resources to work with me, um, I have all those links down below. And if you'd like to book a reading, I have that link down below as well. And I also, if you've made it this far, have a you can donate if this was helpful for you. They're not necessary, but always welcome um, to let me know that you are, you know, loving this and it is helping you. Um, I have a PayPal and a Venmo down below. So I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful February and we'll see you again next month. Mwah. Ciao.